We're back at the Toronto Zoo uh, for an opportunity to review some prints from a shoot I did uh, on a couple of days last week. It's the middle of November and the days that we were here shooting were very overcast, in fact, raining on one of the days. <laughs> very cute. But the prints that resulted are really ones that I'm very pleased with. These uh, two photographs of a Sumatran tiger are, I think, my favorite from that day's shoot, the second day that we were here. We were particularly lucky because he decided to uh, be a little athletic and he jumped up on a high perch. Uh, as you can see from the look in his eye, he was very tigery uh, on that day. And... I was using the Canon D30, the new digital uh, SLR, and uh, I was also using my uh, 300mm f2.8 uh, super telephoto, and on some of the shots, such as this one, uh, I even used the uh, 1.4 extender, so that I ended up with, on the D30 at least, shooting the equivalent of 672 millimeters, handheld I might add, and as you can see, the uh, image quality is absolutely spectacular. So I'm very, very happy. Uh, these tigers are very good examples of shooting in a zoo where there are wire mesh fences. And at first blush, you might look at it and say, how, how can you shoot through those fences? But with a long lens, particularly if that lens is used fairly wide open, uh, because of the very shallow depth of field, the fence essentially disappears. The trick to doing it is for you and the lens to be very close to the fence, as close as you can get, and for the animal to be as far from any fence that might be behind it as possible. And that way, with the very narrow depth of field that you have, particularly at a wide aperture, the uh, fences will essentially disappear. As far as focal lengths go, I'd say 300 mil is the shortest focal length that you want to use in a zoo uh, for large mammals like lions and tigers and giraffes and elephants. And if you have a lens, uh, say a zoom that goes out to 400, uh, such as this 100-400 uh, uh, IS Canon zoom, uh, that's an ideal lens. Uh, for shooting at the zoo and you can even put a 1.4 extender on it and go all the way out to uh, 600 or even 800 mil. Quality degrades slightly with a 1.4 times extender, degrades a fair amount with a 2 times extender, but if it means getting the shot or not, get the shot. Behind us here you see uh, the very silly looking giraffes and uh, this photograph is um, Again, one of my favorites, just because it shows uh, these absolutely wonderful creatures. And what's interesting is when you see them this close up, uh, 300 mil tight shot, um, the coloration is absolutely wonderful. I can't stress highly enough that shooting subjects like this on a dull, overcast day is much preferable to shooting them on a sunny day like the day we have today. Um, the colors are muted, the colors become saturated, and forces you to use a wide aperture, which is again very effective in terms of blurring the background. So I strongly recommend uh, that you shoot on dull days. Also, the fall and the spring are excellent times to shoot at the zoo. Why? The vegetation uh, is sparse. The leaves are off the trees, and in a lot of cases, the animals are much more exposed uh, than they are in the summer when the trees uh, are full of foliage. Uh, this uh, photograph of a uh, bald eagle uh, was probably the most difficult uh, to photograph. The enclosure uh, in which the uh, bald eagle was located just didn't give very good opportunities for trying to avoid the wire mesh. And if you look very closely at this shot, uh, you can just see uh, a texture to it uh, that's the result of just slightly seeing the wire mesh. Uh, this photograph of the ostrich is quite funny. I really like it for several reasons. Uh, first of all, the spikiness of the uh, hairs on his neck uh, are just 
wonderful uh, in a high resolution uh, image. Uh, but also it was quite funny because this ostrich decided he fell in love with us. And if there hadn't have been a moat and a fence between us, I think he might have uh, chased us down the path. I really enjoyed uh, photographing him. Come on, hold still. Uh, the flamingos uh, were absolutely wonderful. The color, the salmon pink color, is uh, really enjoyable. When we were shooting, I hadn't noticed that there are, in fact, some kind of identification rings uh, on their uh, legs. But that doesn't bother me. There's no pretense about uh, these being shot in the wild. They're shot in a zoo. Uh, and whereas I try and avoid concrete and other signs that uh, I am shooting in a zoo. Those are done for aesthetic reasons, uh, not with any intent of fooling anybody. It's also worth comment that I have tremendous respect for wildlife photographers who go out on location working in very arduous conditions. Uh, I've done some of that kind of photography and I know how difficult it is. It's time consuming, it's expensive, it's frustrating, it's physically difficult. Coming to a zoo and photographing animals like these in relative comfort um, is really enjoyable and some people have a, a bit of a, a take on this that it's inappropriate. Uh, well, my attitude is uh, it's fun, wonderful images can be produced, and um, no one's going to stop me from doing it. Then finally, there's the end, or at least the end of this elephant. And um, I think it's worth commenting that details in nature and details in animals can be absolutely fascinating. Uh, the feathers on a bird, uh, the scaly hide of an elephant, um, all of these are uh, just wonderful subject matter for you to explore with a long lens at the zoo.